wanted to see the death of uh, Ariel. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's our hero. So that's uh yeah uh, that's the uh, greatness of what that is. Um, now now this is the thing with Link. When we we're talking about Link. Uh huh. I want you to hear this. What are we doing? I think this is. I think it's got. Yeah, it's got the. Link. You got to make sure to tweet all these out so people can. Yeah. You know, I will. Yeah. I will. Once we get to our thing where we're not watching a video, then it'll do it. So here's this. Yep. Just shut up. No, we'll not. And enjoy. I am enjoying it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My name is Lee, y'all. I'm straight out of high school. Been on the force of good since 1986. Old school. I'm bringing you a laid back summertime jam. Hold on a minute, Link. Hey, what's up, old man? I see that you're embarking on another epic quest. You're gonna use your rope arena to rescue the princess. But you'll need a magic weapon that'll never ever miss. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this! Oh, thanks, old man. That is really very nice. I can always count on you for help and friendly advice. Though I've never seen a sword of quite that shape or size. Oh, God, that's not a sword. It's your dick in disguise. <laughs> yes, I can. Wow. <laughs> Weird, but whatever, there is no time to lose. I got a warp right out of Zelda in this chilled out group. Wait, this isn't Kenneth's lair. I'm a Liberty City. This place looks just like Philadelphia, but even more shit. I'm at the corner <laughs> of the deck. I'm a prostitute church and something in my ocarina must have gone and malfunction. I gotta fix it quickly, there is just to do. Hold on a minute, Link. Oh, man, is that you? This is a place you can't survive with just a sword in your wits. It's, it's dangerous to go alone, take this. Well, that's really kind of dumb. Uh, that's your wrinkle dick again. Look, I know we're wearing tunic, but I'm not in demand. Don't be that way, bitch. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my three best friends, Mr. Johnson and the Juice Crew. If you see the princess, tell the way. I got a war battle here, your Princess Zelda awaits. I must defeat Ganondorf before it gets too late. Okay, now I really don't know where I am. Hold on a minute, Link. God damn it, old man. <laughs> You're in Raccoon City. It's a zombie abyss. It's dangerous to go with home team. No! Fuck you! Fuck you! I'm not giving you a gun touching your weak. Stop the chill out crew! <laughs> Jeez! Come in here telling me you got a wee wee weapon. It's not cool. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna. No! <laughs> so is that a no on the hand job? Or? <laughs> so that's uh, <coughs> that's the band Starbomb. Uh, they do yeah. songs for video games like that. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's Aaron and Danny from Game Grumps, the guys I watch all the time on, oh, yeah, on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. But this is their band, and they're pretty fucking hilarious. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So I, I thought of that because you were talking about, we were talking about tunics. You know, uh, and there's a line where he's yeah. like, I may wear a tunic, but I'm yeah. not into men. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, all right. So now what else? What else? Now that that's happened, let's uh -huh. see here. 
that just Have happened. you examined the world in which you live? Do you believe you are living on a spinning sphere because oh someone God. told you? Or do you know from personal experience? These motherfuckers, Hello, man. hello, Stephen. How you doing? Here we go. Good. How you doing, Stephen? Uh, well, thanks. I'm well. So, I uh, wonder if you could uh, expand uh, upon this expand. in a non spherical fashion. <laughs> well, recently, if you've seen it or not, there's a growing group of people who are doing experiments and coming forward and stating that the Earth is a flat and motionless plane. These motherfuckers. That's the expansion? <laughs> well, basically. Okay. And uh, so it's <clears throat> it's motionless, yeah. and it's flat. And do do they have any idea how thick it is? That's an interesting question. But um, no, like the Russians have dug about eight miles deep, and that's as deep as anyone has ever been. Really? You're one hundred percent correct. Right. And where's <laughs> the center of gravity? And look, I I I was fine with unusual questions of the next guy. But I'm just sort of trying to wrap my head around it again in a non-spherical fashion. <laughs> um. And where is the center of gravity in this uh, on this flat plane? Well, in our motionless plane, there is no need for gravity. We have electromagneticism. What? Attraction between forces that are attracting one another. So is it that we are magnetically attracted to the Earth and we're magnets not... This, gravity is not part of the equation, right? Yeah, it's an electromagnetic universe, not a gravitational universe. Oh, Okay. So the orb, uh, now, do we orbit the sun? Uh, no, the sun, sun, stars, and moon orbit us. It's like we're back okay, in the fucking. Okay, and Mars, of course, orbits us. So it's um, yeah, Earth-centered the... solar system, and the Earth is like flat. Is it round and flat like a dinner plate? Yes, it is. Um, it is a circle around the North Pole, around uh, surrounded by Antarctica, like a. <laughs> pizza dish. You know. So Antarctica is like Saturn's rings around the flat thing, right? So that's the very edge? Yeah, Antarctica is the edge of the world. Really? Right, okay. And so when you fly, when people believe that they're flying around the world, what happens? You can fly around a circle. What? But if they say that they're heading in one direction relative to magnetic north, yes. if they're continuing to, going, to go east and then they end up back where they started... Yes, east and west is only relative to magnetic north. Compass is only point north. Oh, so they're flying not um, around the world, but in a circle around the North Pole, which is at the center of the flat Earth. Yes. Okay. And um, <laughs> so this, of course, requires some challenging reorganization of our spatial orientation, which, you know, uh -huh. I'm fine with. <laughs> I mean, I'm asking people to reimagine society without a state and, and ethics without a deity and so on. So, I, I again, I am fine. I'm sorry? I certainly agree with you on all the uh, um, anarchist uh, qualities of what you've been talking about you for a long time. Of course he does. Yeah, that, that may not seem like a ringing endorsement to some of the listeners, but uh, <laughs> that, that's as it may be. So why is, is, there, is there a deity involved in this formulation? Is well, it turtle? Well, to me, I don't really... Um, ascribed to any religion in particular but after finding out um, what I know now, I have come from being an atheist to believing in a higher power Is it, Chud? it would be pretty tough to maintain that the earth is the center of the universe everything revolves around the earth and for there to be no deity that yeah. would be kind of tough, right? That, that would be like a weird coincidence <laughs> you know? yeah, of I, the entire infinity of 100 billion galaxies, they all revolve around the earth and the earth has a distinctive shape Relative to the rest of the universe, Does it have uh, a at least edge? because you know generally matter that is more than a couple no, hundred miles one. across <laughs> tends to coalesce, as you know, into a sphere. And gravity has its arguments. The, the pro gravity proponents of the case have this argument that says, well, since mass uh, wants to find its closest proximity to the center of mass, you end up with a sphere, uh, which is where we see the rest of the planets in the solar system, the sun itself. The moons, at least the moons at Ceres and Phobos around Mars, are pretty small. But the, um, uh, the, the moons that we can see that are of any reasonable size, size sort of above asteroid size, tend to be um, spheres, right? So we have, as far as we can tell, according to this hypothesis, it's a unique uh, position uh, to, to be the only flat rather than 
spherical large mass object in the universe. Is that fair to say? Well, in our model, we don't really um, we don't believe in things that we can't see and verify for ourselves. How convenient! You know, yeah, like of course. we don't really believe that any anything that NASA says for one matter. Don't believe in NASA. You don't believe anything that NASA says. No, we only believe things that we can verify. So they, they, they might not even be called NASA. <laughs> well, they were started with Nazis from Operation Paperclip. You know, Warner von Braun and other Nazis. Wow. Okay, let, before we go to the National Socialist Connection, um, <laughs> there is a uniqueness in, the, in this cosmology. There's a uniqueness to the world, and that the world is flat like a, and round um, like a dinner plate rather than I don't think this guy can wrap his head around uh, it. I, I think this guy would rip his hair out if he, did, if, he had some, if he had some, yeah. Well, the celestial bodies are like um, in, in question right now. Like if you take a, a, like a high, high zoom camera and you zoom in on Venus like somebody has recently, it certainly doesn't look like what you'll see from NASA for one matter. What? I mean, I've had a look at Venus uh, when I was younger. I bought a telescope when I worked, uh, and um, it it did appear to have little crescents, you know, the way that the moon did, but, of course, much smaller. Yeah, telescopes are um, curved. You know, the lens is curved. Oh, good God. Like uh, convex. Oh, it's just well, beginning. Well, except that, of course, it, it correlates with what we see with the moon, that the moon has crescents that would indicate a spherical um, reality. And uh, that accords <laughs> well, with what we see with the telescope. So the curve of the telescope isn't fundamentally affecting the way that the moon looks to us, right? The moon. And is, listen, I'm, I'm sorry about. I, I know because whenever I put forward anarchy, and, and these are probably objections that have been examined, and uh, at least some response in this cosmology has been replied to. Because you know, I don't want to be the guy who's saying, "But what about the roads?" You know, when it comes to a voluntary society. So I appreciate your patience when I just sort of put forward my natural yeah. um, responses to. Yeah, there's there's no question that is um, wrong to be asking. You know, it's the whole world. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of investigation that it takes. Okay, so what's the if you say that it's the curvature of the telescope lens that is causing the um, apparent crescent of Venus, then why doesn't the same effect happen with the moon? Because when I look at the moon through the naked eye, then I look at it through a telescope, as I did recently with my daughter. There's no distortion that's particularly visible. And also, mm. when I look at things fairly far away uh, through a telescope, uh, they don't appear to be distorted. So why would a distortion be introduced by looking at Venus? You got um, me. <laughs> well, can I get to the moon first? Sure. Can I talk about so something The moon different? is a very interesting and mysterious thing. Mm. They say that you can only see made of one cheese. side of the moon. Yeah. Because it is constantly spinning so perfectly that it only faces us in one direction. Right. Uh -huh. And if you assume that what they're saying is correct about the moon, about the reflection of the sun, if you try and cast a light on a sphere, there will be a hot spot. Uh -huh. And it's when nice. you look at the moon... The moon is equally illuminated from top to bottom on a full moon. Well, yeah, but that's because the sun is 93 million miles away. It's not a flashlight pointed, you know, four inches from an orange, right? So there's not going to be a hot spot <laughs> if the light is that diffused, is well, it? On our model, the sun is about 3,000 miles up, and we do have a lot of ways to confirm this. Oh, wow. I'd like to hear one. Yeah. And is that right that it's 32 miles across? Yeah. Instead of some, – some people say um, – we'll call them the uh, – Scientists say that it's 840,000 miles across, but according to this cosmology, it's 32 miles across and th only a few thousand miles away. Yeah, the scientists throughout our time have uh, like constantly changed their numbers. Like the um, the distance to the sun has changed dramatically to fit their model, not to you know measure what it is in reality. Uh, what has it? I, I mean, from yeah. when I was a kid, it's been 93 million miles, so or eight light minutes. So uh, well, what? Where has it changed from? A long time ago. And many people have theorized the, um, the distance and so on. But if you um, use geometry on Earth, we can measure <laughs> wait, the distance wait, wait, to the wait, sun pause this using shit. Uh, trigonometry. Wait a minute. So scientists aren't good enough for this guy, mm -hmm. that's yet he wants to use mathematics. Yeah, that, that's, you heard that right. Okay. Yeah, you heard that right. Okay. Um, and it's a few thousand miles away. 
So the sun is closer than Australia. <laughs> like up, yeah. From from Canada.